Coming up on the show, the Mississippi Senate bill that would have closed three of Mississippi's public colleges died in a recent Senate committee meeting. The U.S. government is once again trying to ban social media platform, TikTok. Many users are aggravated at the notion. Yep, that's right. All of this and more coming to you on SMTV. SMTV for March 20th starts right now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello USM and thank you for joining us. I am Amaya Norman and today we have a birthday. Thank you so much. How are you all doing? I'm Beth L. Miles <laughs> and here's our top news stories for today. The Mississippi Senate Bill 2726 did not pass in the state Senate committee that took place on March 4th. The bill would have closed three of Mississippi's public universities, and those three universities have not yet been chosen, but many speculated that the historically black colleges and universities in the state would have been the ones that were targeted based on a couple different factors. Number one, enrollment. Number two, economic impact. And that third being degree attainment, to name a few. Senator Nicole Boyd said that she does not intend to bring the original bill forward at this time. However, a new bill was introduced that wouldn't mandate any closures. The aim of this new bill is to take a look at what's going on with Mississippi's universities and colleges. The new bill also was passed to the committee and will be presented to the full Senate for a vote. The battle over TikTok presents in the United States has reawakened as the government takes new steps to address national secur security concerns. If you don't remember, former President Donald Trump attempt to ban the app was halted in federal court in 2021. Now the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a bill forcing TikTok Chinese parent company ByteDance to either sell the app or face a nationwide ban, which has sparked outrage with many users of the app. As a content creator on the app TikTok, I do feel as if the ban on TikTok isn't as necessary as it may seem. Um, so how I feel about TikTok being banned in the U.S., I feel like it is unreasonable um, because TikTok has been a just a regular social media platform, just like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. All right, I think banning TikTok is stupid because that's all we do in our pastime, especially in college, you need a little mindless fun. So they have bigger things to worry about than banning TikTok. I personally think the banning TikTok is crazy because that's the only thing that was keeping me occupied during quarantine. And there's also big issues going on in the world, like I can't get an apartment, I can't get groceries, I can't do a lot of things. So yeah, that's my opinion on the banning TikTok, it's boom. There's, the, there's better things y'all, people can, like, the politicians can worry about, like, I don't know, better infrastructure, better pay, economy, like, there's better things that can be, like, better gun control, lots of things. The university hosted a powerful event with the Armstrong Branch Distinguished Lecture featuring Dr. Fania Davis, a renowned civil rights attorney and social justice activist, was celebrated for her 31st year of service. Dr. Davis highlighted the potential of truth and reclamation processes based on the restorative justice to reckon with America's legacy of racial injustice and chart a new path forward. She urged universities to model these approaches on campus. Before spring break started, the Southern Miss Activity Council gave students the chance to play games and be in virtual reality. They hosted a virtual reality simulator for students in the union lobby right before spring break. It was hosted on two days, March 7th and 8th. They had two simulator chairs with a car seat and a wheel attached to it and a television to see what and how the two candidates were driving on screen. If you would like to get feel for what SMAC does and gain experience on how to put on events, you can check out SMAC programs that are offered for bigger events each semester. Be sure to follow SMAC on Facebook and Instagram for more details on member membership drives or events. 
Now, last weekend, I was in downtown Austin covering South by Southwest when all of a sudden, at the bottom of my hotel, there was an uproar of commotion. Here's that story. So I'm Beth L. Miles here in front of the Omni Hotel in downtown Austin, a couple blocks from 6th Street where South by Southwest is happening. And protesters tell us that they were walking on the sidewalk having a peaceful protest when all hell broke loose and it became violent. Get your things and get the hell out were the words that rang from protesters on the sidewalk right before things got a little ugly. He was just protesting with the other protesters. Nothing happened to the other protesters. It was just him. Uh, Austin Police Department, they just need to do better. They like to single people out, so I just feel like without singling people out, they need to tell everybody the message. Now, that eyewitness recollection was of the arrest of Jeff Zavala, who couldn't tell me much because the case is still pending. Fair warning, the video of his arrest is quite graphic, but does all the talking that he can't. So as you can see right here on the scene is where that young man got what he says attacked by police officers in downtown Austin. The march wasn't doing bothering anybody except making some noise and the cops come over here and started rushing up on everybody and arresting people. I don't feel like it was a reason. I don't feel like it was a like logical reason for him to get treated, like how he was getting treated. So there is plausible cause right now that the ICJ has ruled that Israel is committing genocide right now. It's like saying that in a school shooting, we should bomb the entire school instead of trying to find the school shooter. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't justify it. There's no conversation. It's not complex. It's not complicated. As you can see, Austin is a city with a bunch of hospitality, but nevertheless, chaos can strike anywhere. I'm Beth L. Miles with SMTV. Stay tuned for our upcoming Flash News briefing and more. But before we leave, since March is Women History Month, we went out and asked students of USM who are some of the most influential and inspirational women in their lives. Uh, so like, I guess the most inspirational women in my life are like all my homegirls back home in Jackson, like all my artists, friends, who are women, they're they, they like push me as a creative and everything. It's gotta be my mom because uh, she just, you know, showed me that hard work pays off, and no matter what you do, it's like you should always be the best at it. Never give up. The most inspirational woman in my life is Jaya's mother. She's just a light, a being of just sunshine. Sam, my mom. My mom. My mom, because she's like, she's a simple woman, you know, she's a retired teacher. She's getting up in age and she's still moving like she's my age, you know, so yeah, she, she really, uh, I don't know, I guess she proves that, you know, still moving and you've been doing it for your life. The most inspirational woman in my life is my Keisha Hunter. The most inspirational woman in my life is probably my mom. Um, the most inspirational woman in my life is my mom. Um, she's always picked up the plate. It's, she has six children. So she's always been there as a single mom and done her part and beyond. So everything in life I do for her. For me, I would say my mom is the most inspirational person in my life. I would say my mom. She had cancerous cells in her breasts. Um, all of my middle school year, and I never knew she took care of us every single day with a smile on her face. I got two of them, my mom and my sister. Miss April! My mama. Yeah, my mama. My mama. Bishop Carey Crawford. The most influential woman in my life is my wife, Diana. Whatever we do, she gets to decide. My mom. My mom as well. My mother. My mom. My mother was the most influential woman in my life. Um, me personally, I would say my mom. Like, yeah, like, the things that she done went through, I look at her as, you know, a role model. She's one of my role models. And, yeah, but I just want to be 10 times better than myself. That's just the word we're not going Word for word.
it's important to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall, but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Welcome back. Here's your Flash News Briefing. For local news, Shaquille O'Neal will soon be opening a big chicken franchise in our very own Hattiesburg, Mississippi. This restaurant will be the first big chicken franchise to be open in Mississippi. The exact location of the future establishment will be next door to Aldi and Aspidental off of US 98. Big Chicken was founded by NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal and is said to combine his home cooked childhood dish with present, present day trending flavors. The company is experienced rapid growth with over 30 locations planned in various states. The franchise is also planning to be featured on Carnival Cruise Lines. Now over in state news, the Mississippi Comic Convention will be welcoming voice actor Tom Kenny as one of their featured guests. Tom Kenny is mostly known for the famous voice of the character SpongeBob SquarePants, but Kenny is also known as the voice actor for many other characters from various shows, including Rick and Morty, Adventure Time, The Powder Puff Girls, and many other kids' shows on Nickelodeon. The Mississippi Comic Convention will take place at the Mississippi Trademark in Jackson on June 22nd and the 23rd. Tom Kenny will only be at the convention on the 22nd. If you would like to learn more or find out what other guests will be in attendance at the, the convention, you can visit MississippiComicCon.com. For national news, a 15-year-old African-American with autism was shot and killed by California police. The incident took place in San Bernardo County on March 5th, just before 5 p.m. Deputies were alerted by a 911 call about a, about a domestic disturbance. In the call, his sister told emergency dispatch that her brother was committing assault and battery. Authorities said that when the responding deputy arrived, Gaynor, the 15-year-old boy, charged at him with a garden tool. That it was authorities said deputies fatally shot the teen. The family attorney said the teen did have autism and was experiencing an episode at the time he was shot and killed. Many are speculating on ways the situation could have been handled in an alternative way. Yeah, absolutely, Amaya. That's a very sad story, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, just how Dr. Dave Davies said today in class, that is a fear of that is. autistic parents for their children to grow up in the world and yes. possibly have an episode. Yes, and that is a fear because you never know what they're going on in their head. And I feel like with parents that have children that's that have autism, that is something that they very have to have more concern or watch over. Yeah, so. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, Amaya, it's starting to feel a little bit more like spring and some better news. Yes. Let's toss this over to Kennedy. Yes, but then let's go to Kennedy News. Newsom stepping in for Rachel Brox with SNTV's weather to see what this week forecast has in store for us. Hello, Golden Eagles. I am Kennedy Newsom, and welcome to your SMTV weather. Let's take a look at Thursday's forecast, shall we? Our highest temperature for Thursday will be at 66 degrees, which will be complemented by a low of 49 degrees. It will be mostly cloudy with on and off rain showers. The rain chances for Thursday will be at least 45%, so if you're going out, bring your umbrella just in case. It's time to see what the rest of the week has in store for us. Let's go to our five-day forecast. Friday starts us off with a high of 70 and a low of 49. 
On Friday, the sun will pop out from time to time, so expect the, the sky to be partly cloudy. Saturday, however, will only have a few clouds in our skies and will be mostly sunny. The high for Saturday will be 73 and the low will be 47. Sunday will have the highest temperature for this week at 74 degrees. The low will only go to 57 degrees. Sunday, you can also expect mostly cloudy skies. Monday will, be, one, Monday will continue with a constant warm temperature and a high of 74 and a low of 60. Monday will also be very cloudy as well. Speaking of clouds, let's take a look at this week's rain chances. Starting with Monday, there will be a considerable cloudiness because the weather will be a 58% chance of rain. You do not want to forget your umbrella for Monday. Backtracking to Sunday, you probably won't need your umbrella because there will only be an 8% chance for rain. Saturday's rain chances are in the single digits with only a 9% chance of rain. Friday might have a small continuation of Thursday's showers with only a 24% chance of rain during the day. That is all for your SMTV weather report. Whether it's rain or shine, be weather wise. Thank you for joining me, Kennedy Newsom, for your SMTV weather. Peace out, Southern Miss. Hey, thank you so much, Kennedy. It's super hard to step in for somebody, but you got the job done. We still have SM2 Sports and Community Calendar left in the show. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. SMTV will literally be right back. I would help you bear your burden. I would watch each child of yours grow strong and true. Teach them to read and to write and to sing so that their voices be forgotten nevermore. If words were enough, I would sate your hunger, and you would know you are my sister, my brother, my child, if words were enough. Sports Recap. I am Maya Evans and we have a full and exciting recap for you this week. First up, after the break, the Lady Eagles are 18 and 13 after losing in a quarterfinal of the Sun Belt Championship Tournament to James Madison, 49 to 77. It's not over for the Lady Eagles as they get some postseason action in the women's NIT. You never know, or the other tournaments as well, until Sunday. So, first day back, you know, I Conditioning will be a little tough, uh, but I think we can just, it, their legs are rested, injuries should be healed. Um, and so we will practice today at, at two o'clock. Will be our first round to be able to practice to get ready for the tournament. We will have more on the Lady Eagles and their opponent next week, so stay tuned. The men's basketball team ended their season 16 and 16 in the second round of the Sun Belt Championship. Taking a loss to Texas State, 59-75, so that wraps up basketball season for the Eagles. It's getting warm outside as Southern Miss track team had their season opener at South Alabama. They had a total of six first place finishers. Trinity Flagler, Jada McDougall, Savier Varnell, and Trinity Benson in the women's 4 by 100 meters with a time of 44.27 seconds. Jada McDougall in the women's 100 meter dash with a time of 11.59 seconds. Emma Bates in the 800 meter dash with a time of 2 minutes and 12 seconds in the 110 hurdles. Jared Williams plays first with a time of 14.16 seconds. Austin Bourne in the 1500 meters with a time of 4 minutes and 5 seconds. Lastly, Elijah Berry in the 200 meter dash with a time of 21.53 seconds. Baseball rallies through Marshall in 3-0 series. The Golden Eagles came out on top against the Herd. Next game will be on the road at Georgia Southern, March 22nd and March 24th. Zane Palomino places fifth in the indoor championship in Boston, making him fifth in the nation. And the moment you all been waiting for, this week player of the week goes to Marche Cabacho. She had fired a 200 under 70 during the final round of the Mountain View Collegiate. This has been your sports recap. Make sure you tune in, tune in next week's show. Peace and love.
Yeah, I'm not a big sports fan, but I think it's very crazy that the women's basketball team don't know who they're playing. Yeah, absolutely. So in the NIT tournament, you you, know, you mm -hmm. normally don't know till about a couple days prior, but let's just hope it's not no crazy team like the Gamecocks or nothing like yeah, that coming out here. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's head over to Kennedy Drake with our community calendar. Hey Golden Eagles, my name is Kennedy Drake and I'm here with the Community Calendar where we gather information from around campus and within the community near you in Hattiesburg. Join USM's Creative Writing Day for workshops in creative nonfiction, poetry, and fiction. Learn how to bring a better writer in the Liberal Arts Building, room 201, on Friday, March 22nd from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The event will be led by graduate students. Bring your passion for storytelling to explore and express your creativity. This weekend, the Hattiesburg Arts Council will have an evening of jazz and blues featuring Alfonso Sanders. Come to the Hattiesburg Cultural Center on March 23rd from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tickets are $25 on eventbrite.com. Delicious foods and refreshments will also be available. A drawing will take place at 8 p.m. for a framed photograph by Betty Press. Don't miss out on this musical journey. Gabrielle Grace and OK Kennedy will perform at Funky Frida's on March 26 at 6.30 p.m. Both Grace and Kennedy are awesome singers and songwriters. Their music is certain to take you on a journey of the depths of pain and heights of joy. Their unique and diverse range of musical styles will create an unforgettable listening experience. Bring your friends and family for a memorable evening filled with positive vibes. Paige Manson will bring this year's lecture on March 26 at 6 p.m. Her lecture discusses the women's jury movement in Mississippi during the 1950s and 60s. It dives into the important work of women activists in the state. This is the perfect event to add inspiration during Women's History Month. If you have an event you would like for us to promote, send it to sm2news at usm.edu. This is just one way we thank our community for watching Southern Miss TV and supporting us here at Southern Miss Student Media Center. Visit our website, sm2media.com, to keep up with all of our news. Signing out, I'm Kennedy Drake, and this has been your community calendar. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Now here's a special one. In honor of Women's History Month, we recognize Caitlin Clark. On March 3rd, the Iowa Guard made history. Clark became the all-time leading scorer in all of Division I basketball, leading both men and women. The previous record was held by the late, great Pete Maravich. Congratulations to Ms. Clark on being a trailblazer not only for women around the world, but for also placing her name in NCAA history books. Now onto our box office hits, brought to you by Rochuk, Basnet, and Justin Ware. Welcome to SMTV Cinema. We just came from watching Dune Part 2 and we have a lot to talk about. Dune Part 2, directed by Dennis Felino, builds on the first film foundation, offering stunning visuals, epic action, and deeper exploration of Arrakis. The returning cast of Timothy Calme, Zendaya, and Rebecca Ferguson all have taken their struggles to a new level, and newcomers like Austin Butler and Florence Pugh add fresh energy to the thrilling story where we get to know more about the Fremen culture and the political drama surrounding Timothy's character, Paul. 
The story was elevated by the amazing music composed by the legendary Hans Zimmer, along with the outstanding visual of Araka's desert with breathtaking details, from towering sandworms to integrate feminine settlements. Costumes and set further immerse you in the diverse cultures, while action sequences are thrilling spectacles. It's a must-see sci-fi movie that you can watch today in your nearest theater, and that's all for SMT Cinema. Until next time. Thank you so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media page, like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sm2news at usm.edu. Yep, that's right. Also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out to Josh Wilson at joshua.wilson at usm.edu. You can find all these stories you've seen here and more on our website at sm2media.com. That's it for SMTV. Thank you guys for joining us on my birthday, and we'll see you on our next show. Always remember, Southern Miss to the top. in more than 60 countries. We join hands with communities, live together, work together, transform lives, and serve boldly together. Are you ready to go the distance to make a difference? Then we have a place where you belong. Join us. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. In America, millions of families are facing hunger. Many are forced to choose between food and other necessities. I'm stuck between paying for medications or paying for food. John from Maine. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over six billion meals to people in need each year. I thought pantries were for less fortunate people, but anybody could be less fortunate in a day or even a second. Claire from Virginia. Now I can provide food for my family again. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Liam from Ohio. No one should have to worry where their next meal will come from. Together, we can end hunger. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Around ADHD, there's tremendous ignorance. Most people are not aware of the positives. Can't sit still, disorganized, Annoying, can't focus, lazy, lazy, stupid. You can't make it. You never listen, you don't clean your room. It's a super skill set. Adding your own flavor to fashion comes with age. Okay, Diane, look at you. Forgetting how to add doesn't. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's. Some things come with age, some others don't. I am studying to be a NICU nurse to give back that same care that I received. I was born at 26 weeks and was in the NICU for 89 days. 
Having a support system like March of Dimes is just, it's needed, it's necessary. Improving maternal and infant health is as important today as it was then. Join me in making a difference in the lives of families everywhere.